Hello and welcome as Zenith Players presents The Outside by Susan Glassville. Uh, I'm TJ, I'm our technical director. That's Claire, our artistic director, along with Buttons, our cuteness director. Uh, all the actors you are here, uh, you will be hearing tonight are uh, volunteering their time and their talents from their homes to bring a little bit of entertainment into your homes. We want to thank them very much for joining us. Uh, we'd also like to thank our friend, your friendly neighborhood Shakespeare, for posting this on his pages. You can check out his website at shakespeareapproves.com and his Patreon at patreon.com slash Shakespeare. You can find out more about him at the aforementioned website or by visiting his Facebook page, Shakespeare Approves, your friendly neighborhood Shakespeare. Uh, we'll have links to visit him as well as some of our other performer friends in the comments of this video. As always, we want to acknowledge and thank all of the medical professionals and essential workers who have been working for the past forever to keep us all as healthy and safe and now vaccinated as possible. If you're interested in more information about our Totally Volunteer organization, check out our website, zenithplayers.com. Feel very free to check out our very attractive donations page. 100% uh, of all donations go towards production costs, which these days consist of the various subscriptions that allow for these readings to happen, but very soon we'll go towards uh, production costs for live performances. If you would like to read with us in future projects, because we're not stopping these just yet, just send us an email at casting at and we'll get you on board. Join us next week for something, but uh, for now, sit back, relax, enjoy Aileen Goldberg as the captain, Steve Anderson as Joe Bradford, Shakira Searle as Tony, Emily Brennan as Mrs. Patrick, and Mira Singer as Ali Mayo in The Outside. Seen as a room in a house which was once a life-saving station. Since ceasing to be that, it has taken on no other character, except that of a place which no one cares either to preserve or change. It is painted the life-saving gray, but has not the life-saving freshness. This is one, that, one end of what was the big boat room. At the ceiling is seen a part of the framework from which the boat once swung. About two thirds of the back wall is open because of the big sliding door of the type of barn door. And through this open door are seen the sand dunes. Beyond them, the woods. At one point, the line where woods and dunes meet stands out clearly. There are indicated the rude things, vines, bushes, which form the outer uneven rim of the woods. The only things that grow in the sand. At another point, a sand hill is menacing the woods. This old life-saving station is at a point where the sea curves. So through the open door, the sea also is seen. The station is located on the outside shore of Cape Cod, at the point near the tip of the Cape, where it makes that final curve which forms the Provincetown Harbor. The dunes are hills and strange forms of sand on which, in places, grows the stiff beach grass, struggle, dogged, growing against ox. At right of the big sliding door is a drift of sand and the top of buried beach grass is seen on this. There's a door left and at right of big sliding door is a slanting wall. The door in this is a jar at right of the curtain. And through this door, Bradford and Tony, two lifesavers, are seen bending over a man's body attempting to restore respiration. The captain of the lifesavers comes into view outside the big open door at left. He appears to have been hurried, peers in, sees the men and goes quickly to them. I'll take this now, boys. No need for anybody to take it, Captain. He's, he was dead when we picked him up. Danny Sears was dead when we picked him up, but we brought him back. I'll go on a while. <sighs> Work trying to put life in the dead. Where'd you find him, Joe? In front of this house, uh, not 40 feet out. What'd you bring him up here for? <sighs> Horse of habit, I guess. <sighs> we brought so many of them back up here. And then it was kind of unfriendly down where he was, wind spitting into the sea on you, till he'd have no way of knowing he was ashore. Lucky I was not sooner or later as I walked by from my watch. <laughs> you have accommodating ways, Tony. And no sooner or later, I, I wouldn't say it of many Portuguese, but the, the sea is friendly as a kitten alongside the women that live here. Ali Mayo, they're both crazy, had that door open. Sweep it out. And when we come along, she backs off and stands looking at us, looking. But I just wanted to get him somewhere else. So I kicked this door open with my foot and got him away. And if, if he did have any notion of coming back to life, he wouldn't have come if he'd seen her. Uh, I wouldn't. You know who he is, Joe? Uh, I never saw him before. Uh, Mitchell telephoned from High Head that a dory came ashore there. 
last night wasn't the best night for a dory. Not that I couldn't have stayed in one. Uh, some men can stay in a dory and some can't. That boy is dead, Captain. Then I ain't doing him any harm. This is the first time you've ever been in this place, isn't it, Tony? I never was here before. Uh, I was here before. And the old man, he lived here for 27 years. <laughs> or oh, the things that happened here. There have been dead ones carried through that door. Oh, the ones I've carried. I carried in Bill Collins and, and Lou Harvey. and <laughs> It's all over now. Huh? You ain't seen no wrecks. Don't ever think you have. I, I was here the night that Jenny Snow was out there. And it was a wreck. We got the boat that stood here... Uh, down the bank and oh lord how do we ever do it the, the sand has put his place on the blake all right and then when it gets too godforsaken for a living for a life-saving station a, a lady takes it for a summer residence and then spends the winter she's a cheerful one a woman she makes things pretty this is not like a place where a woman live on the floor there is Nothing. On the wall, there is nothing. Things do not hang on other things. No, things do not hang on other things. In my opinion, the woman's crazy. Sitting over there on the sand, what is she looking at? There's nothing to see. <laughs> I know the woman who works for her is crazy. Allie Mayo, uh, she's a Provincetown girl, huh? She was all right once, but... Mrs. Patrick comes in from the hall at the right. She is a city woman, a sophisticated person who has been caught into something as unlike the old life as the dunes are unlike the meadow. At the moment, she's excited and angry. You have no right here. This isn't the life-saving station anymore, just because it used to be. I don't see why you think this is my house, and I want my house to myself. Well... I must say, lady, I would think that any house could be a life-saving station when the sea had sent a man to it. I don't want him here. I, I must have my house to myself. You'll get your house to yourself when I've made up my mind that there's no more life in this man. A good many lives have been saved in this house, Mrs. Patrick. I believe that's your name. And if there's any chance of bringing one more back from the dead, the fact that you own the house ain't gonna make a damn bit of difference to me. I must have my house to myself. Uh, hell with such a woman. Ugh. Moves the man he's working with and slams the door shut. Ali Mayo has appeared outside the wide door, which gives on to the dunes, a bleak woman who seems little more than a part of the sand before which she stands. I, I don't want them here. I, I must. Suddenly, she retreats and is gone. I couldn't say. Uh, I couldn't say, Allie Mayo, that you work for any too kind-hearted lady. What's the matter with a woman? Does she want folks to die? It appears to break her all up. You see somebody trying to save a life. What do you work for such a fish for? A crazy fish. That's what I call a woman. I've seen her day after day sitting over there where the dunes meet the woods, just sitting there looking. I believe she likes to see the sand slipping down on the woods. Pleases her to see something getting buried, I guess. Some coffee would taste good, but, but coffee in this house, uh, oh no, might make somebody feel better. Uh, you want me now, Captain? No. Well, that boy's dead, Captain. Danny Sears was dead, too. Shut that door. I don't want to hear that woman's voice again. Ever. <sighs> cheerful pair of women living in this cheerful place. Place that life savers, a place that life savers had to turn over to the sand. <laughs> Patrick woman you used to be all right. Um, she and her husband was summer folks over in town. Used to picnic out here on the outside. It was Joe Dyer. He, he's always talking to summer folks who told him the government was going to build this new station and sell this one by sealed bids. 
I heard them talking about it. They were sitting right down there on the beach, eating their supper. I was going to put in a fireplace and going to paint it bright colors and have parties over here. Summer folk notions. They did want it. You want it. Buried house you couldn't move. I see no bright colors. <laughs> Don't you? How astonishing. You must be colorblind. I guess we're the first party. I was in Bill Joseph's grocery store well, one day last November. When in she comes, Mrs. Patrick from New York. I've come to take the old life saving, saving station, says she. I'm going to sleep over there tonight. <laughs> Bill is used to queer ways. He deals with summer folks. Huh? But that got in. November. An empty house, a buried house, you might say, off here on the outside shore, way across the sand from man or beast. And he got it out of her, but not by what she said, but by the way she looked at what he said, that her husband had died, and she was running off to, to hide herself, I guess. A person would feel sorry for her if, if she weren't so standoffish and so doggone mean. Mean folks have got minds of their own. And she slept here that night. Bill had men hauling things till after dark. A bed, stove, coal. And then she wanted somebody to work for. Somebody, says she, that doesn't say an unnecessary word. When Bill comes to the back of the store. I said, it looks to me as if uh, Allie Mayo is the party she's looking for. Allie Mayo's got a prejudice against words. Maybe she likes them so well she's saving of them. She's not spoken unnecessary word for 20 years. She's got her reasons. Women as men go to sea ain't always talkative. I wonder who he was. Young. Guess he's not been much at sea. I hate to leave even the dead in this house but we can get right back for him. The old place used to be more friendly. Well, Joe, we brought a good many of them back here. Danny Sears is tendon bar in Boston now. They've gone? Wait. And they're leaving him then he's they have no right J just because it used to be their place i want my house to myself wait if i could say that i can say more that boy in there his face uncovered something Twenty years, I did what you were doing. And I can tell you, it's not the way. He had been married two years. Married two years. He had a chance to go north on a whaler. Time's hard. He had to go. A year and a half it was to be. A year and a half. Two years we've been married. The day he went away, the days after he was gone, I heard it first. Last letter said farther north, not another chance to write till on the way home. Six months, another I did not hear. Nobody ever heard. I used to talk as much as any girl in Provincetown. Jim used to tease me about my talking, but they'd come in to talk to me. They'd say, you may hear yet. They'd talk about what must have happened. And one day a woman who'd been my friend all my life said, suppose he was to walk in. I got up and drove her from my kitchen. And from that time till this, I've not said a word I didn't have to say. 
The ice that caught Jim caught me. It's not the way. You're not the only woman in the world whose husband is dead. No. Dead? My husband's not dead. He's not? Oh. Wait. Wait? Don't you think you've said enough? They told me you didn't say an unnecessary word. I don't. And you can see, I should think, that you've bungled into things you know nothing about. When you keep still for 20 years, you know things you didn't know you knew. I know why you're doing that. Don't bury the only thing that will grow. Let it grow. I know where you're going. What you'll try to do over there, bury it, the life in you. Bury it, watching the sand bury the woods. But I'll tell you something, they fight too. The woods, they fight for life, the way that captain fought for life in there. And lose the way he lost in there. They don't lose. Don't lose? I have walked on the tops of buried trees. And vines will grow over the sand that covers the trees and hold it. And other trees will grow over the buried trees. I've watched the sand dip down on the vines that reach out farthest. Another vine will reach that spot. Strange little things that reach out farthest. And will be buried soonest. And hold the sand for things behind them. They save a wood that guards a town. I, care. I care nothing about a wood to guard a town. This is the outside. These dunes where only beach grass grows. This outer shore where men can't live. The outside. You who were born here, die here, have named it that. Yes, we named it that, and we had reason. He died here, and many one before him. But many another reached the harbor the outside, but an arm that bends to make a harbor where men are safe. I'm outside the harbor, on the dunes, land, not life. Dunes meet woods, and woods hold dunes from a town that's short to a harbor. This is the outside, sand, sand that covers, hills of sand that move and cover. Woods, woods to hold the moving hills from Provincetown. Provincetown, where they turn when boats can't leave at sea. Did you ever see the sails come round here when the sky is dark? A line of them, swift to the harbor, where their children live. Go back, back to your edge of the woods. That's the edge of the dunes. The edge of life, where life trails off to dwarf things not worth a name. Not worth a name. And meeting the outside. They're what the sand will let them be. They take strange shapes, like shapes of blown sand. Meeting the outside. I know why you came here, to this house that had been given up, on this shore where only savers of life try to live. I know what holds you on these dunes and draws you over there. But other things are true besides the thing you want to see. How do you know they are? Where have you been for 20 years? Outside, 20 years. That's why I know how brave they are. You will not find peace there again. Go back and watch them fight. You're a cruel woman, a hard, insolent woman. I knew what I was doing. What do you know about it, about me? I didn't go to the outside, I was left there. I'm only trying to get along. Everything that can hurt me, I want buried, buried deep. Spring is here. This morning, I knew it. Spring coming through the storm to take me, take me to hurt me. That's why I couldn't bear things that made me know I feel. 
you haven't felt for so long, you don't know what it means. But I tell you, spring is here. And now you take that from me, the thing that made me know they would be buried in my heart, those things that I can't live and know I feel. You're more cruel than the sea, but, but other things are true beside the things you want to see outside. Springs will come when I will not know that it is spring. What would there be for me but the outside? What was there for you? What did you ever find after you lost the thing you wanted? I found what I find now I know, the edge of life, to hold life behind me. You call what you are life? <laughs> like it's those ugly things that grow in the sand. <laughs> I have known life. I have known life. You're like this cape, a line of land way out to sea. Land, not life. A harbor far at sea. Land that encloses and gives shelter from storm. Outside sea, outer shore, dunes. Land, not life. Outside sea, outer shore. Dark with the wood that once was ships, dunes, strange land, not life, woods, town and harbor, the line, stunted straggly line that meets the outside face to face and fights for what itself can never be. Lonely line, brave growing. It loses. It wins. The farthest life is buried. And life grows over buried life. It will. And springs will come when you will want to know that it is spring. The captain and Bradford appear behind the drift of sand. They have a stretcher. To get away from them, Mrs. Patrick steps farther into the room. Ellie Mayo shrinks into her corner. The men come in, open the closed door, and go into the room where they left the dead man. A moment later, they're seen outside the big open door, bearing the men away. Mrs. Patrick watches them from sight. Savers of life. You savers of life, meeting the outside, meeting... Meeting the outside. End of play. Thank you for joining us for The Outside by Susan Glass. Big thanks to our friend, your friendly neighborhood Shakespeare. Uh, you can visit him at his website, shakespeareproofs.com, or on Facebook at Shakespeare Proofs, your friendly neighborhood Shakespeare. Um, there's uh, links to his content and some more, including, uh, hey, actors, come on, uh, come on camera, uh, including uh, Chased Treasure, which uh, our friend uh, Aileen here is a member of. Um, we would like to thank all of these actors who uh, volunteered to read with us tonight. Thank you all so very much for joining us. Uh, this was our 90th individual reading. Um, so we're getting up there. We <laughs> would, uh, 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 if you enjoyed this reading, all of our past readings are available on our Facebook page, a little bit of organized on our website, zenithplayers.com. If you want more information on us, including how to be involved in a reading like this one, go to our Facebook page, Zenith Players, and send us a message or send an email to casting and our technical director that's me will get back to you as soon as possible uh, as always thanks so much to the essential workers and uh everyone working to keep us safe and uh healthy and vaccinated we have uh we don't know yet but we have something coming up next saturday uh and uh there will be plenty more live stream readings for the moment thank you and good night <laughs>